Fab FM is the local radio station in Port Douglas and the Douglas Shire. Paul and Marion Macon own Fab FM, and Paul Macon hosts the Brecky or Morning Drive show. And Paul, thanks for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure, and it's uh, great to be with you. You've done it all. Uh, 5KA in Adelaide, uh, national radio and TV, uh, advertising, and you still seem like a nice guy after that foray into advertising. What was the great attraction for uh, moving up to the country where crocodiles roam free? Well, you left out for a start game show. I did a game show in Perth called $50,000 Letterbox, and that was on nationally before uh, the Wheel of Fortune. But uh, to answer your question about Fab FM, well, we, we purchased the license. We were originally negotiating with the owner to buy the license. It wasn't called Fab FM then. It was called just Port Douglas FM. And uh, we couldn't reach an agreement with the owner. But then about oh, maybe three months after those negotiations broke down, it, we were sent an advertisement by some friends up here for the license uh, being sale, uh, on sale from the liquidator. So we put in our bid for it, expression of interest, and eventually uh, acquired the, the license. And that's how we ended up with a radio station. And I always thought, I always had it in my mind, this because of the Fab Four, and I love the word Fab. Uh, I, you know, it's fabulous and all that. So we kind of went with Fab FM. We did have a couple of listeners call up, however, in the beginning to say, why did you name a radio station after a washing detergent? <laughs> But the, the station itself, it really services the community. Do you see there's a, a clash, though, with tourism and the local issues? For example, tourists, when they come to an area, they want to know what's happening, where to go, what to see, what to do. Uh, with local issues, you have the, the issues with um, you know, council, um, a rubbish collection, things of, of, of a local nature? Well, our actual licence uh, through ACMA doesn't really allow us on air to get involved in any local issues as far as controversial issues are concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we, we then, we're able to do it through what we have as our podcast here on Fab FM. And so any of those sort of issues we can do on our podcast. And they've become, I mean, podcasts at the moment are the biggest thing. And the listeners here have taken like a water, a duck to a water. They, they just love the podcast. So wow. we're able to do it on podcast, but not necessarily on air. Um, a lot of the, the council issues or, or if the council has to get information across, they use FabFM for their advertising to get those. For, for example, we're on water restrictions, uh, number one water restrictions at the moment. So they're able to get ads on that way. But, but ACMA, our licence doesn't allow us to do talk back or do any of those local issues. It's only to play the music that we play and talk about that. Do you find that's restrictive at all? Uh, it can be a little bit restrictive, uh, and, and it was initially, but we were able to work with ACMA to, uh, to do the podcasts, and those social media podcasts, uh, they don't come under ACMA. So we're able to handle issues, do interviews with the mayor, do interviews with people who are unhappy with the council or happy with the council or, or tackle those local issues without sort of uh, getting into license issues. Radio stations, particularly the uh, the local stations, really are a great gauge for the temperature of the uh, of business. How is business at the moment uh, in Port Douglas and the surrounding areas because of COVID? Well, it's pretty well non-existent. I mean, for example, Port Douglas relies on tourism heavily. I mean, it's a tourist town. Mossman relies on sugar, and of course, that's going okay, and the sugar mill, and so that side is doing okay. But the this side where the station is, we're at the marina here, we're on the railway station at the marina where the cane train leaves from in, in tourist times. Very badly affected. I mean, it, it, sometimes you can look down our main street, Macrossan Street, and fire a shotgun. At other times, you can see a lot of people, and this depends on holidays, school holidays at the moment where people can get away. But what we are finding is that Queenslanders are travelling. And we're getting so, when well, they come past the window and give me a wave, I always go out to say hello. And people from Townsville, Rocky, and, uh, and all places south uh, in Queensland, all coming to holiday up this part of the world. Now, they may not have chosen us initially. They might have been going to another state or overseas. But because of COVID, they've picked us. So within the state, the tourism has picked up. But uh, as far as other people, you know, other tourists travelling from around Australia, particularly Victoria, this place, uh, some people have told me that 60% of our tourists come from Victoria. 
and that is a massive amount and with co with COVID locking down Victoria or Daniel Andrews locking down Victoria uh, those people aren't coming up so look we to answer your question we are affected so badly at the moment, uh, re-tourism and COVID. What about international travellers too? Uh, that's some way off because we mm. can't travel because we might get sick. Uh, how, do, how do you feel, or how do you feel that the operators will survive, say, if you take into account uh, Victoria, which is uh, still up in the air, uh, we have Queensland, uh, an election is about to happen, so who knows what's gonna to happen to the borders. You have the general fear of the community still because governments are great at creating fear, uh, not so good at <laughs> alleviating that, that fear of fear. So how do you see businesses uh, maybe in the next, um, you know, for the next, say, six, 12 months uh, coping? Well, you've, you've, you've made some good points there. And I mean, uh, the, the Palaszczuk government up here has uh, kept the border closed for political reasons. I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, they're going to open the border to New South Wales completely on November 1st, one day after the election. They're also not allowing New Zealand travellers in, uh, whereas other states are. So, you know, Queensland is just shut off to just about everybody, apart from a few uh, people in the northern part of New South Wales. So, you know, we're, we're in terrible strife. And, and to keep it closed like this, a lot of people are very, very upset about it. I mean, I think, I think the border should have been open weeks and weeks ago uh, to New South Wales, not to Victoria. We understand the, the Victorian situation, but it should have been open to New South Wales weeks ago. And yet it is still closed to people from New South Wales. We could have had all of New South Wales, people from Sydney and all over New South Wales coming up to this part of the world, visiting Port Douglas, and boosting our economy and we haven't got it. So, you know, for political reasons, I mean, our political masters just have us in the vice. They have the set in the vice and they're squeezing it. What's the word, um, say, in the tourist industry in regards to November 1, when the borders come down, uh, will there be a, a great influx of bookings for, uh, for Port Douglas and the surrounding areas? Oh, Everybody feels that, and I certainly feel it. And I think because we've moved into the area, we're not locals. Uh, well, we are locals. I mean, I always say if, you, if you're living here, you're a local. But we're not long-term locals. And, you know, the people up here may be a bit pessimistic about it. I feel like so many businesses that once the Queensland border is open, there will be a rush of people, particularly from New South Wales, coming in. I mean, we're already getting lots of people from South Australia. I had some South Australian tourists up here uh, who sort of wade through the window. Oh, there's Paul, you know, because they know me from Adelaide. And I went out and had a chat to them and they said, oh, you know, as soon as we were going to go overseas, we mm. had these overseas plans. But as soon as we were allowed to come up to see you, we hopped on the plane and came up straight away. So I think there's going to be a huge influx. The businesses feel that. I certainly feel that. And I think we're going to how our tourism is going to go the, through the roof. And particularly when Victoria settles down and when Victoria opens, get ready and i think but it's just a matter of uh, and i think probably you'll ask me the question about small and large businesses mm. but i think some of the smaller ones won't survive but the bigger ones will is it like the uh the uh, uh recession that we had to have sort of rings a bell from the 90s you and i can probably recall that a lot of our audience can't, uh, which is a bit scary as you get older. Uh, but is this, you know, some politicians that, you know, actually a lot of the, uh, the, the left are saying, well, business will just start up anyway. They'll just, you know, build it and they will come. And that's not the case, is it? Well, it isn't. And uh, when you're mentioning the left, you're mentioning uh, some governments, the Palaszczuk government, the Andrews government. I mean, these people, you know, it always makes me laugh when I see Chairman Dan say, uh, oh, look, we're all in this together. No, we're not. He's not in it with us. Um, he's still drawing a massive salary. So are the public servants. They're not without a job. But there are people who uh, are doing it hard without jobs. I mean, the job keeper and job seeker, absolutely. Without that, they mm. were stuck. But, I mean, it's all right for them to say, oh, we're all in this together, you know, blah, blah, blah. We've got to... But then we're not in it together. The, the public are not in it together. There are so many people out of work. There are so many people doing it hard. There are businesses going to the wall. And before this is over, there'll be more businesses go to the wall and, and up here as well. Some will survive. Uh, I mean, us as a business, if I can quickly tell you, we had some wonderful advertisers and that's our only income is advertising. And we have wonderful advertisers that came on board when we first came up here uh, two years ago, exactly two years ago. 
And when COVID hit in March, we said to our advertisers for three months, free of charge advertising. We're not going to charge you one penny wow. for advertising for three months. Then after three months, we'll reevaluate it and only charge you a, a percentage, you know, 20% or something of your normal until you can get back into business. All of those businesses came back on board with us and all of those businesses has survived. So I think it's up to every single person to help the, your neighbour during this. But don't tell me governments are in the same boat as us. Those, the federal government, the, the state governments, they're all drawing massive salaries and public servants making decisions, health officials making decisions on behalf of us. They're not in the same boat as us. They're mm. in a very, very different boat. What about with the election? Uh, what's the region being promised by the major parties during this campaign? And uh, any proposals there that really get you excited, Paul? Well, both parties uh, and, the, and uh, of course, the independents are promising jobs, jobs, jobs and more jobs. Now, what does that mean? I mean, you know, it's, it's gobbledygook. Uh, the government themselves, I mean, the particular government up here, the Palaszczuk government, they haven't even released a budget. So we don't even know how much money's in the coffers. So how are they going to get jobs, jobs, jobs and infrastructure? We don't know how much is in the bank. And the, uh, the opposition is the same. They, they, they're going blind as well because they don't know how mm. much money's in the, in the bank with the government. So it's all over the joint. As far as other industries are concerned, I was just talking to a guy the other day who's now going into looking at growing coffee uh, oh. in, in a cooler part of this region, mm. growing coffee and turmeric, uh, because, you know, these are things that uh, around the world they have a shortage of. And he's looking at things around here that um, there's a world shortage of and looking to see whether we can grow that in our region. Now, that might sound small potatoes uh, or small coffee beans. But it's, it's, it's a mindset of people, you know, thinking outside the square. And that's what a lot of businesses are doing now. Some of the farmers are getting out of sugarcane and saying, what can we grow so that when this is over and, the, and you know, the world is looking for a particular product, mm. can we supply them? Can we think outside the square? Can we get new businesses into the Douglas Shire as we are into the region? So I think what COVID-19 done, it, it, it's done two things, I think. One, well, certainly one, it's, well, maybe three things. It's made us appreciate our friends and how much we miss our friends and family. It's made us think about what other things we can do in business and how to survive, right? And it's also taught us to wash our hands and to keep our hands clean. And, and the, uh, the generation of kids now are learning to be much cleaner than they used to be. I think, in fact, all of us. Mm. I mean, we've got two lots of hand sanitizer in here. I use it every single day in and out. Mm. Uh, I never used to do that before. I'd use it occasionally and wash my hands. I'm a pretty clean bloke. But hasn't it taught us that? So mm. there's many lessons have come out of COVID-19. And let's face it, we will get through this. It's not World War II. Those people in Australia and around the world faced uh, worse hardships than we ever did. And, you know, compared to World War Two. So, yes, we are uh, involved in a war, but we'll get through it. And I think we'll be better for it. Assuming that the borders reopen, that we have the imaginary wall down um, and somebody's looking for a, um, a, a couple of hour flight for either from Brisbane or from um, Sydney or Melbourne. And uh, or even maybe some of the New Zealanders are here and uh, they're thinking about say, seeing part of Australia. Sell us Port Douglas. Why? I mean, we're going up there at Christmas because we're going to sit by the pool and, and sip some nice shardies and um, see the beautiful Dane tree and you know, all sorts of things. But how would you sell it to someone that's sort of thinking about moving or going to, the, uh, to Port Douglas for a couple of weeks? Well, it's unique. And, and I know that word is overused a mm. lot, but this place is unique. One of the great things that I found when I was a tourist before we moved up here to start a business up here, the radio station, was that when you get to Port Douglas, you go to other places, it takes you, particularly if you're in the media, and I was in a pretty high-pressure media mm. job before I left, you know, doing investigative journalism, and, you know, sometimes your head, it's spinning. <laughs> I would come up here, and within 24 hours, I was relaxed. It has a zen feeling. So Port Douglas still has the village feel and a very zen thing about it. Mm -hmm. Across the river to the Daintree, a lot of people, it's amazing how many people think 
that if you're in Port Douglas to get to the Dane Tree, it's going to take days and days to get into the. You can do it in one day. Mm. I mean, I, I recommend you take more, but you can actually hop in your car, drive to Cape Tribulation through the Dane Tree, have lunch in the Dane Tree, and come back here to Port Douglas in one day, and do it easily, and be back, uh, you know, mm. four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So. What I say to you is it is unique. We're on the doorstep of the Great Barrier Reef, one of the great uh, treasures of our planet. And the Dane Tree itself, which is absolutely magnificent. And I've got to know some of the locals up there. So when you do come up or whenever I invite people up here, I can tell you where there's some great swimming holes where you don't have to worry about crocs. The water is crystal clear and you will relax. And I think that is unique relaxation discovery the three great things mm. that we have in this area. Fantastic, we're very similar. We're on the Gold Coast uh, broadcasting and the, um, we have some old crocs here, but generally they're in wheelchairs <laughs> and we've got walking sticks. Oh, that'll uh, get, by the way, that'll get back. But you also, do you still have the meter maids? Uh, no, they've gone. I mean, oh, much, that, to my, be, much to my horror, let me tell you. The, they wouldn't be PC now. <laughs> Actually, not much is, and that, that's another conversation that you and I could more or less let loose on. Hey, uh, somebody wants to hear Fab FM. How would they do that? Say, besides well, being in Port Douglas. Well, you just go on your phone. Uh, you go on your phone to any of the radio apps, mm -hmm. My Tuner or, you know, My Radio app or whatever, and you just put in Fab FM Port Douglas and it'll pop up and you put your app on there. We've got many people who listen in on the app and we've even got people overseas, Canada and other places that... Uh, listen in to the program so you can get it there and in fact when we came up from Adelaide we packed everything in our vehicle and came up to Adel uh, from Adelaide to here we listened to Fab FM on automation all the way up so it was very good. Well the uh, and just I mean, you, you play country which is not one of my favourite formats but it's huge demand especially up north and I've got to say I was really impressed with the story that I heard that Willie Nelson wrote a song about you. Yes it's a song called Me and Paul um, and and uh, I, I stick to the story that Willie and I travelled around America and uh, wouldn't look on planes because mm. they checked what we were uh, having a smoke of and all of that sort of stuff. And that's the story I tell my listeners. Now, if they are that gullible to believe that, I, I, have, some, I have some swamp land up in the Cape York that I'd need to talk to them about. Why, why let the truth stand in the road of a good story? That's what I say. You've got it. See, all that training in the media hasn't gone to waste. Paul, it's been a pleasure. We've got to do this more often because I think Port, Port Douglas and up north is, and Queensland, in fact, is one of the great states of Australia. You have, I mean, you would have been uh, like, like myself. I felt that Queensland was it's almost like a secret because just back in Sydney or Adelaide or Melbourne, you sort of think, oh, a nice place for a holiday, but to live. But once you move to Queensland and where you are, it just opens the eyes and you can feel yourself starting to live again, can't you? You can. It, as I said, the relaxation, the zen of this place. So we look forward to seeing you up here. And by the way, just a little bit of country music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul Macon, uh, great chatting, poor taste in music, but I still love it. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. And just a treat to talk with you today.